Hi, I'm Peter Walker from Peter Walker Piano Tuition and uh, welcome to a Tuesday tip. And today's Tuesday tip is all about dynamics. In fact, if you've been watching these, uh, you'll know this is the third video in my very little series about how to control dynamics. Well, dynamics, as we've seen in previous videos, is the quality of being loud or soft when you play the piano. Something a piano as an instrument does particularly well uh, because it's something you can control directly from your fingers on the keyboard. And in previous ones I demonstrated how you can use the weight of your fingers uh, and the weight from your whole arm in fact to create loud chords or notes, individual notes. or quietly, either chords or individual notes. Well today we're going to look at two things and uh, that will conclude our little look at dynamics. Um, to get good control of dynamics on your instrument you are going to need a, either an acoustic piano or a good digital piano which has weighted keys that will give you um, a good range of dynamic control uh, from very quiet to very loud. Um, you can use, if you're on a keyboard um, and it has touch sensitive keys, you can get some control there as well. It's not as easy uh, and you'll need to experiment a little bit with where the actual note um, is sounded when you push your key down. So it's going to be a little bit more challenging on um, a keyboard. If you've got a keyboard with no touch sensitive <laughs> um, capability, then unfortunately there isn't really um, a way of controlling the dynamics. So I'm going to assume that you have, as I said, either an acoustic piano or a digital piano. And that's where this is going to work best. OK, so we looked at the extremes, the loud and the quiet. Um, today we're just going to look generally at dynamic shaping, we'll do that in a moment, um, but uh, before we do that we're just going to look at something called a crescendo and a diminuendo. Diminuendos are sometimes called decrescendos because they're the opposite of crescendos. Uh, now a crescendo simply means um, getting gradually louder. So if you have a scale, for instance, starting off quietly and then making that scale get louder and louder as you go along. Um, and diminuendo or decrescendo is going in the opposite direction with your volume. So starting off loud and then getting quieter like this. Now what's happening inside the piano, you might remember the little, the little animation of the um, hammer hitting the strings. What's actually happening there in the piano is that the hammer is obviously hitting the strings because if it didn't there'd be no sound. But as the force of my pushing down on the key is changed by the amount of weight I put down on the key, um, the hammer is hitting the string with less or more force and that's creating the difference in the volume of the sound. So it's all about weight that you push down on the keys. Um, it's something quite hard to describe in words and you really have to practice it and you really have to uh, almost work it out for yourself but uh, the main thing is to be aware, and I think I said this in a previous video, of where the key bed is. In other words, the point at which the key stops going down. It's usually a few millimetres. It can vary from piano to piano. Uh, so you'll need to work, work out where your point of stopping point on the key bed is for your individual instrument. Once you've done that, um, then it's a question of practicing how much pressure 
you need to put on the key to achieve a different dynamic. Clearly when you're doing a crescendo you have to start off with a very light pressure and as you get louder or as you wish to get louder make that pressure more and more and more. Now we use numbers a lot in music um, for instance we use finger numbers from the thumb outwards one two three four five we use numbers to count such as um, if we're playing a waltz we'll be counting as a one two three one two three so it gives it that gives us our, our rhythm um, and we can also use and my recommendation is if it's not too confusing <laughs> is to think of crescendos in terms of numbers as well uh, analogy could be made here with a volume control on an amplifier or a TV control, whatever. Um, and for an initial um, exercise in doing this, um, I'll tie this in with my finger numbers. I'm going to show you what I mean. Um, I'm going to start off by playing just up five notes of the scale. So our finger numbers will go one, two, three, four, five. But now I'm going to also use that as a dynamic uh, description as well, where one is as quiet as you can get it, and five is as loud as you can get it. And so if you think one is quietest, two maybe a slightly louder, three a bit louder still, four louder still, and five, really go for it. Now of course your fifth finger is commonly the, the weaker of the five, <laughs> weakest of the five fingers. So instead of just using a finger pressure, you're going to need to push with your entire arm to get that really strong uh, forte dynamic. So you should have been able to hear how the volume was gradually increasing because each note was slightly louder than the one before. Now think of it in the opposite direction. So this time one is as loud as possible, two is a bit quieter, three is quite still and so on until you get to five, which is going to be our quietest moment. And that's going to give us um, practice in creating a nice diminuendo. As I played each note, as I went from one number to the next, I varied the pressure on the key, the amount of weight on the key, but always I was pushing right down to that key bed. That's the important thing. Don't, what I call, tickle the keys and just think that if you just, for a quiet note, don't think that if you just play so lightly the key doesn't go right down to the bottom you might not even get a note, let alone a quiet one. So even for quiet notes, you need to push right down to the bottom of the key bed. And you can practice this in the left hand as well. We'll do a crescendo first. And now a diminuendo. So, moving on to uh, how we put all this into practice and we come up against the concept of dynamic shaping. This is where we um, use our own expression of the music, our feelings about the music and also the markings on the page as well to create something with um, some character and some light and shade about it. Here's the beginning of a quite famous piece um, by Elgar. It's uh, Nimrod from his Enigma Variations. Uh, this wasn't originally for the piano, um, but the arrangement for piano is actually by Elgar himself. So it, you know, it's uh, it's realistic. <laughs> it's what Elgar would have imagined if the music had been written specifically for piano and not orchestra. First of all, I'm just going to play the first 
couple of phrases or so with no dynamic shaping at all. And uh, I want you to just have a little listen to that. So I kind of played at a fairly bland sort of mezzo piano sort of sound. And uh, yes, bland is the word. Um, it's not very exciting or interesting played in that sort of way. Now I'm going to put some dynamic shaping in. And um, I think you'll agree that there is quite a difference in the effect uh, in terms of expression and uh, just how the music uh, is uh, con uh, communicated to the listener. just purely by weight, pressure on keys, 
uh, you can create that majestic sound sometimes in the climaxes. You can create the uh, pianissimo, pianissimo sounds um, to create a feeling of tranquility and beauty as well. All within the power of the uh, of the capability of the piano to uh, create dynamics, interest, dynamic interest. Well, that. Uh, is the end of today's Tuesday tip. Uh, if you enjoyed that and found it useful then look out for the next one. <laughs> um, don't forget to like and share this post and um, have a good week. Bye for now. <laughs>